Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Treasure Corals and in today's video we're going to feed some fish. I'm going to talk about a really strange situation that's going on with my frag rack and I need your advice on this one. I'm going to talk about my RO tubing disaster with this aquarium. Uh, we will build a calc reactor and finally we'll pay a visit to a local fish store reef paradise. So let's dive right in. Like these guys are all hungry so let's do a little bit of feeding this morning this is the pellets mix that I am making for them every week it's enriched with garlic with uh, amino acids and uh, celcon and just a few vitamins so it's just a mixture of seven different pellets whatever I have handy I think these guys are really hungry. So let's take a little pinch and throw it in. Who's going for it? Oh, yep. Yeah. A little bit more. I've noticed that uh, the Nasso tang is not as accurate when it comes to chasing the pellets. I think he's just outgrown this tank or starting to outgrow this tank and he's in need for a much bigger tank than just a five footer. But for now, uh, I think he's gonna be okay here for another few months and then we'll see. Thought I would document what's been going on in my LPS frag system. So over here, you can see I've got a few coral still needs a little bit more um, organizing but I've been having lots of issues with this section here the spicy lemon fabia so as you can see I fragged a few pieces and you can see that some of them are um, overturned some of them are right now uh, missing and if we look over here in the tank you'll see that actually there's some that are lying down on the ground, on the floor, and basically I organize this every single night, and in the morning this is kind of what I'm coming back to. So I think one of the fish, and I'm thinking that this is the dory that I got from my buddy Michael. Thank you, Michael. Um, I think this is this is the only explanation. Um, uh, he just messes with uh, with those frags, so um, so every every day I'm getting tired of it. Uh, every day I'm lining it up perfectly. You know, there's no missing spots here. And then every morning I come back and these pieces are all laying around, just really messy. Let's look at it from the top. So I think it's the dory. I haven't. Um, here, here's, here's the dory right there. Let's take a look. Yep, that's probably who it is. Let's take a look at the anemones, just quickly. Nice anemones. All right, so dory is has been doing it, and I don't know what to do. Um, I like the fish. I don't think I want to take it out of the tank. But I have no idea, first of all, why it's doing it. I've never had this problem before. But he's intentionally, or she intentionally goes in and stirs it up, kicks it out. I never have seen it um, just in person, but that's the only explanation. Because you can see there's no strong flow here in this section. There is some flow on, on here, but by the time it gets here, you can see by looking at the storage, there's nothing. So I think that um, Dory is just getting in for whatever reason, just rearranges things. And if you have any suggestions of what I can do, or if you've been uh, keeping a frag tank and you've ran into something like this, please let me know in the comments, because um, I'm kind of getting tired of picking up all those frags. And some of them really make it all the way 
um, on some of the other platforms in the other side of the tank. So somebody is doing it deliberately. This is not just some messy situation. So if you have any idea, please let me know. And hopefully I'll um, update uh, on whatever the solution is. We organized all spicy lemon favia. You can see there's 20 pieces here. And I'm gonna keep it here, but something tells me that just in a couple of hours it's gonna be a mess again. I don't know what it is about spicy lemon favia. As expected, just two hours after I showed the first part of the video, this is what somebody did in the frag section. So any thoughts on who might this be? Is this this yellow um, mimic tank or is this Dory or do I have somebody else who's doing it? I have no idea. Here's the Dory. Here is my number one suspect. But look at that. I had 20 frags in here and right now there is just a few that are intact and the rest of them are just scattered all over the bed. Not cool man, not cool. I thought I would document what goes into an automatic water change system. So unfortunately my water change system that served me well for three years have fully clogged up. So I'm in the middle of replacing it right now on this aquarium and it's something that's probably gonna take a good chunk of uh, Sunday. So I thought I would document this um, because I th think a few of you have asked me about my water change and what do I do and I'm actually going to make a few improvements which I think are going to be pretty cool. So first I'll just explain what went wrong. So I had this system for about three years and you can see there is three tubes, RO tubes that are going in from the basement all the way to the main level and into the kitchen which is where I have my aquarium. Now the black uh, one is the auto top off. The Blue is fresh seawater, and then yellow is dirty water. Unfortunately, I think um, maybe it's just time or whatnot, but uh, in three years, this blue line has fully clogged up. And since I'm going to replace it, I think I'm gonna replace all three. Uh, so that's uh, first improvement. The second thing, I'm actually going to run uh, one more line, which is going to be the uh, calc reactor. I'm thinking I might hook it up. So, I'll, and I'll talk more about it in the future videos for my rationale, but that's what's going to be. And then finally, um, I'm going to run uh, an ethernet cable. So while I'm using Apex that's wireless, I might as well run an ethernet and just splice it and kind of hook it up so that there's a little bit more there, there's less wireless stuff uh, in the house and more kind of robust connections so that's the project I also want to show you this is kind of in the kitchen where it's running see all this dirty water that's basically what's inside of the blue line and over here you can see this is kind of how I'm fishing this through so um, I'm replacing, you know, let's say one blue line with uh, two more. So in total, there's going to be five uh, lines that are going in. And uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm attaching it through a duct tape so that now it's firm and then I can fish it and, and run it through. Still, the holes that I made a while ago are fairly small, so I need to make them bigger. And that's that's a lot of work. And you can see... I'm using, so this is a lot more wires behind the range and I am using this hole saw to, to make the, the holes. A lot more uh, tubing over here, I need to be very careful not to uh, kink it and then basically all the tubing goes 
in the back over there uh, down into the basement so lots of work but uh, I've done it once and while it's very painful um, it's just a matter of time until I'm done one hour later this is what we've got I got all five wires coming from the basement now so we've got my Ethernet this is the red one is going to be for calc washer the white one is going to be for auto top off the new one blue <coughs> is going to be the new salt water and yellow is going to be dirty water so now I need to run it all the way to the tank and then I gotta clean up all that horrible stuff over here so that I ran it under I need to t tidy it up I need to attach it to the wall boards so once this is done I hope I'm not gonna have to do that again for at least another three years now that I'm done running all the wires from the basement onto the main floor I have hooked up the auto top off for which I'm using this liter meter Spectra Pure. This is my second model. The first one unfortunately died um, just a few months ago. So I'm not sure how much life I'm gonna get it from this one. And it is stinking expensive. I had this one laying around for quite some time. Otherwise, I don't know what I'd be doing. But um, this is now fully hooked up. There's the white tube that comes in. And right now I have the black one that goes into the sump and there's actually something really cool in the sump right now i'm trying out a new uh, 3d printed device here for uh, a filter floss replacement so i'll talk about it in the upcoming videos right now i'm just testing it but i think it's going to be pretty cool so the black line over here is the auto top off the other two lines are not hooked up yet so i'm not having a water change system just yet because i was focusing on increasing my calc um sorry my ph in in the aquarium by the means of a calc reactor so i have run the line from the basement and i've built this little contraption here so you can see i'm just using a bubble magus uh, container dosing container and i have just drill the hole. I don't think it needs to be super airtight here because there's no pressure. So I'm just using some silicone on both sides. And what I was going to do first was build, build this little platform here, put it in this section um, and put the liter meter, the auto top off underneath it. So this is where it would go. Then the magnetic stirrer goes on top this goes on top of the magnetic stir and then finally um, it will just use the gravity so the water comes up from the basement through the red line of the um, uh, calc uh, RO tube so it's just pure RO and then um, it gets in here so similar to what I have on my frag system and then once it raises uh, comes up uh, it will overflow onto the main um into the sump unfortunately as you can see from here that's quite a distance for the gravity to follow and if something goes wrong um, i've got lots of equipment here just not really um, uh, smart configuration so plus it will get really really tight over here so i'm thinking now that i might go the opposite way so for a while I would just kind of gave up on this idea but I think I'm still gonna follow through but instead I am going to uh, empty this refugium and a little shout out to my friend Ron who has commented uh, in another video the one that you've seen I think uh, last week where I had when I stopped the water flow, this water level started to come down. And I was thinking that maybe there was a leak um, and the water was just coming out. But now, <laughs> this is actually uh, uh, one of the benefits of running a YouTube channel because all those uh, uh, people smarter than me providing some really cool uh, commentary. So 
really what I think happened, and it makes a lot of sense, and Ron called it, is uh, there's a back siphon. So basically, the moment I turn off the water, this tube, which is goes all the way down, it uh, basically back siphoned up to the manifold and then down into the return pump chamber. So that's really what happened. So I think I'm ready to stop running a refugium for a while. And I don't think this water volume of, I don't know, eight gallons or so is gonna make or break this tank. So I think I'm going to drain this tank and try to make sure that it is actually empty and dry on the inside, clean it up. And then the idea is to put the calc reactor in there because then worst case scenario, even if it overflows, there's only 12 volts of electricity. So I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Plus I can always put a, uh, an apex uh, leak detector in there and if I do that then uh, I can just program it to turn off so there's lots of different ways that uh, I can I can do it but then at least this gives me a peace of mind and I think adding a calc reactor on this tank is gonna accomplish first of all kind of the same thing as what um, the refugium does which is it will bring down the phosphates because uh, calc water will bind with um, with phosphates and then I think it's, um, it's, it's it will bring down the phosphates and then also it will increase pH. I'll be using less two-part so that's also a plus and then finally it will also add more water um, I'll just have to calculate my evaporation rate so my auto top off has to work less so yes I'm increasing the complexity somewhat but it might actually be uh, paying off over a long term so that's my goal and if it doesn't work I can always come back to having a refugium and what I'm going to try to do first is empty this chamber and then start working on hooking this bad boy up. Uh, one big benefit of a refugium, which I was notified through Apex, uh, was it raising my pH uh, at night. So right now the pH is pretty low. I haven't calibrated this uh, probe in quite some time, but I think it dropped to like 7.6 without uh, the refugium. So. I'm hoping that calc wasser will help uh, buffer it and, and increase it as well. So that's, those are the next steps. So now the chamber is empty. Took a little bit of elbow grease, but we are done. And I'm using that box as a platform. I'm just um, laying it sideways. So <clears throat> having it a little bit lower because there is less travel from here on uh, to the water level. And the next step would be to hook up the dozer, um, program it maybe for two or three liters per day first. I'm pretty sure that it's about a gallon of evaporation from this tank, so I'll just go a little bit under. And add a little bit of calc water uh, next. So that would be the next step. So this is what the final product looks like. We've got the section chamber here fully emptied and it looks fairly clean. I'm glad there is no leaking. Once again, thanks uh, Ron for uh, a great uh, um, putting a two and two together. Uh, I uh, definitely didn't think of that. So that's, that's very good. So the sump is still holding, which is excellent news. So we've got a little platform I actually made it a little bit lower because I all I need is for that section here for the tube to be higher than the baffle and you can see that it already is dripping so I'll try to focus on that uh, right here so we've got the drip every second or two I've programmed it to add about four liters of um, RO water per day. So what we have here is uh, 
this fairly cheap magnetic stir which you can get on Amazon I think it's $30 $34 Canadian and it's hooked up right now through this wire to my apex which is right over here and every hour the way I have it programmed this will kick um, in and I think I might actually turn it on right now for you just to show but it will kick in for two minutes and you may notice that I have it kind of at a fairly moderate setting so having this fairly moderate setting helps me not stir it up too high and right now it's 207 so this was stirring for about two minutes about five minutes ago and you can already see that it's settling so the calc um, is right at this level here so probably what one third and I think it comes down to be about two inches of the actual uh, thickness of the calc but if I'm going to take my apex right over here and then I will where is it skimmer calc stir right here so I'm gonna turn it right on you may notice what will happen is this will start moving so it's starting to move a little bit higher higher and then eventually that um, calc um, solution is going to be all white it's going to be all cloudy but because i only have it ab about 40 percent of intensity it's going to come up just short of the water surface which is where i want it to be so it'll take another probably 30 seconds for it to get up to that level but then it's just going to stay there so that really really intense uh, calc is not going to get all the way uh, to the top which is where I want it but I'm gonna just turn it off right now or I'm gonna set it to auto and then basically it takes about a couple of minutes for it to come down there but all this goodness this uh, saturated solution here is uh, what gets into the tank so you see it's dri dripping and what I'm gonna do differently now is I'm gonna actually program the versus so that it adds about three liters from midnight to 8 p.m. Uh, and then I'm going to maybe push it a little bit uh, at a higher pace afterwards. Wraps up the Kalkwasser reactor. You can see that it's working quite well and I think it's fairly safe. So I'm happy with this uh, design and I think the trade-off of giving up on refugium will first of all, I'll, I'll have less trouble keeping this clean, less maintenance and all I need to do is just add calc every few days and that's it. So I'm mov now moving on to our water change system. So you see now that I have the blue and yellow tubing um, so the blue is freshly mixed salt water and yellow is dirty salt water and the way I have it programmed is I'm actually gonna use one of the cool features in Versa where you can program different rates at different time and the way I have it is it will it's still set to also do about four liters per day of a water change so it's a pretty nice uh, water change size you can see it's dripping the um, they're both configured equally to dose or exchange um, about three liters every from midnight to 8 p.m. so in those hours it will evenly distribute and add and remove three liters of water but then what I have um, set up is the blue one so the one that adds water in will turn on and within 15 minutes so one five it will add another one liter of salt water and then it will turn off for the night and then the uh, yellow one will um, start getting the water out for 15 minutes and it's going to also take about 15 
uh, one liter in 15 minutes out. So what I plan to accomplish with this is there will be a rate of a much faster adding and removing water, which hopefully will um, push any detritus or any impurities through the tubing. So as opposed to just having something very, very passive as this drip, 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 it will actually um, push through a little bit harder. So hopefully doing this every day will try to also prevent the clogging up issue that I've had, because I don't think I will want to rip up everything and uh, lay a new RO tubing at least for another three, four years. If that's not happening, I'm just giving up on this hobby. I thought it would be a good idea just to show you how I have hooked up the Versa in the basement. So you've got the first pump for freshly made salt water. So that's why it's blue. I'm thinking white is uh, RO water, so it's void of anything. The one where you add salt is blue. The yellow is basically the one that has ammonia in it, so that's or that's why it's yellow and then finally I have so that's the second uh, dosing pump and the third dosing pump which is red this is calc so I picked the red color because oh just that's the one that I had handy um, but thinking um, and and clearly lining or, or delineating every um, liquid with a particular color will help immediately know uh, what's running where and helps prevent errors. So you can see it's all not quite on a continuous mode. Uh, as I've explained earlier, they only dose for a certain period in time, but you can see that they're all turning continuously. That wraps up the uh, this project. Let me know what you think. Um, is there certain things that I should have done or could have done a little bit better? Um, am I missing something? There's still a little bit of cleanup I need to do. I need to remove that uh, wire and rerun it. Um, or the cord, I need to remove this tube. It doesn't do anything. I need to clean up the sample a little bit more. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. So once again, what can I do to take it to the next level? What can I do to make it a little bit better? Let me know in the comments below and let's take a look at our apex and what it's showing. So pH is still fairly low. Um, I would expect something a little bit higher. So maybe I should increase the four liters to something you know, a little bit more, but I have to just watch for uh, the evaporation. I don't think this tank evaporates for more than one gallon per day. At least that's how I remember it. All right, taking a look at Reef Paradise. And it's end of day Saturday. I think this is Demo right there. Hey, Demo. How's it going? It's going well. Just taking a quick peek. Um, I think you're still waiting for your uh, big order. Is that correct? Three big orders. Now. Three big orders. Any estimates on when they're coming? Uh, we might be able to get a booking next week. So we're hoping for next week. Uh, if we're lucky, worst case, I'd say probably a week after that. A week after that. All right. So if you are in the neighborhood in the next uh, week uh, to ten days, give uh, Demo a call. Uh, but I think there's a few things I wanted to take a quick video of. One of that is this um, beautiful tank. I think it's really starting to settle in, and um, the corals are. I can actually recognize some of my corals here, which is nice. But also, things are starting to get hold. We've got a massive green slimer colony at the back. A few antheas. It's a very calm looking tank. And I can recognize at least two tanks in there. There's a gem tank and a tamini. Both are pretty docile. We've got a Nice little cardinal. More antheas. The larry tail antheas are probably the easiest ones to keep, at least in my experience. But let's take a look at the coral as well. So we've got this uh, series of torches. 
I don't know a lot of those names, but uh, pretty cool. We've got a Goni Island right here. And finally, frog spawns over here. Pretty nice. So the tank is lit by two XR15 radians and some supplementation by Reapright. So there's a, a TV with some motion cinematics playing, which is pretty cool. And then if we're going into the main section, yeah, I don't, uh, usually there's a lot more coral here, but that's where we are right now with all the shipping, all the delays and whatnot. Lots of club polyps. Some pavias. Pretty cool. Ooh, we've got some fish. Those are the uh, purple tanks. Very nice. Purple tanks, dark fish, right here. And a few of those anthes for sale. Hey Dimo, um, so this, how big is this tank? So it's sold as a 3.9 gallon, but I think there's closer to 3 gallons of water in the actual tank itself. So it's uh, not really too easy to keep, but we're managing to keep it looking pretty nice. Oh, probably even easier if you have uh, another bigger tank nearby where you can just take yeah, the water. Yeah, we do a quick little swap room with some water every week, so it's really easy to maintain it. Very nice. And what do you have for the lighting? So I'm using an Aqua 9 2 from Spectra. Right now I used to have um, a Reef Bright Lumilite Pro, a little 50-50, mm -hmm. uh, which was a little too white. I had it running for probably two months like that, but a lot of the corals just were, really wouldn't show too much color. So I decided to put this little light on it. Um, a little bit more money, it's around 140 bucks, but you can see it's it's pretty nice color, something so small. And probably Aqua Illumination Prime would also work very well on this one. Oh yeah, you'll probably only have to run it like 20%, but oh, yeah. AI Prime would work very well. Very nice. And uh, what about, uh, what, what can you keep inside of a tank like this? I've tried everything. Uh, I even tried some Acropora, which didn't live too long, but I think it's because the hammer and the frog spawn were stinging it. Right. Um, I've tried some Digitata, didn't do too well. I've had a Ghani in here that's kind of just hanging out for dear life now, but it did survive well for about a month and a half. I'm not sure what is causing it to not do well. Mm -hmm. I had eight heads that were flourishing for a bit, but I have a primer crab in here that keeps slipping them, so I think that's why they're not doing too well. <laughs> but um, all the softies, so I had a leather in there that I did remove, just some mushrooms, some both olives. I have some dragon's tongue algae as a display algae. Obviously, the green star polyps do really well. I yeah. did have a, a pretty big salinity swing of about a week ago, which is why the frog spawn doesn't look too happy. How did that come about? How I didn't did you top the tank off? <laughs> <laughs> a couple extra days, I was closed Monday, Tuesday, and then I didn't top it up till I think Friday. So uh, I think there was almost two, maybe three liters of water that I had to add to the tank. Oh my! So, so on such a small tank, that's yeah, a, that's a big swing. Way quicker. I recently installed the bigger dehumidifier in the store too, so I think that increases the evaporation. Right. Which I don't have an auto top off on this little tank. I wish I did, but so yeah, I'm a lot more on top of it now. I'm doing it daily. That's beautiful. And how big of a heater do you need for something? Uh, I just use a little 50 watt, a Marine Land 50 watt. It's okay. Nice and small if it's in there. I Sweet. upgraded the pump to a CJ Micra, so it's mm -hmm. quite a bit more flow now. Before there wasn't too much flow. And other than that, I just have a bag of chemical here. Nice. In there. That's it. And what uh, do you know the model of the CJ? It's the Micra Plus, which is this little guy here. It's um, a really small pump. How much is something like this? Uh, Forty bucks retail. So it's very inexpensive to upgrade any tank, really, even if you had a smaller like Evo oh, nice. or something. Yeah. It's pretty quick flow, it's 185 gallons an hour. And it fits perfectly, perfectly in there. Right? That's amazing. And I have it on the lowest setting with the sponge removed. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of flow coming out of it right now too. Oh, I see. So, no, this is uh, awesome. I'm uh, actually thinking of getting one for myself. So maybe that uh, will be an inspiration for some of the viewers as well. You know where to get it. And who makes it? It's Lifeguard Aquatics. It's their personal series. So it's a rimless Starfire tank. 
Sweet. Mostly there's lighter edges. They're kind of 45s. Ooh. Yes. So yes. It's a little unnecessary. Makes it a little bit more expensive, but it's a very, <laughs> very uh, beautiful looking tank. Gorgeous. Um, well, Pico tanks or uh, nano tanks are all the rage right now, so yeah. I love to see uh, something as healthy as this. And then you can have shrimp in here and, and maybe one or two like very small fish. Yeah, so. you could have a few different smaller fish. I had a tail spot plenty, but he did jump out one day, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, I think I might change the clown out for, for some really unique, maybe little panda gobies or something when I get them. They're always really tiny when they come in. Nice. And uh, you have more in stock, I take it? Tanks. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have one in stock right now. We're Sweet. waiting for more. Yeah, how much is it? It's a hundred bucks for the tank with the pump. Wow. So basically, uh, not that much money to get a full. It's pretty uh, expensive. Uh, you know, you can start with a more basic light for about another hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. um, a heater is around forty bucks, and you know, rocks and realistically to set it up, you're probably looking around the three hundred dollar price point if you're getting everything uh, new. But still not bad for something so cute and small. Love it. Just love it. All right, thanks, Demo. You're welcome. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any suggestions on what could be happening with my frag rack, or if you have any recommendations for upcoming videos, please write in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next Sunday again.